Jan Johnson, and today I'm talking about rain gardens. I'm standing in a rain garden that I just actually completed this year, and I wanted to show you some of the plants that you can use in a wet site on your property. The first wet feet plant that I'm going to talk about is Ilex fruticillata or winterberry. Winterberry has these magnificent red, bright red berries in the fall. One is called Sparkleberry. I planted this last year and look how great it looks. Now this does love wet and if you plant a whole mass of this in, the, in October, November, it's just stunning. Look at this. Beautiful. Winterberry. And then in front of the winterberry I have planted here Itea, Henry's Garnet. And this is a crab apple. And Itea also loves wet and it turns this beautiful dark red garnet color in the fall. It's just starting to turn now. It's going to be outstanding in about another three weeks. And then moving forward, I'm now getting into the wettest part of the property. And that is where I created this little basin here. You see this little rock basin? This is the lowest spot in this whole property. And there's actually a pipe underneath but there's so much water. We had about a storm about two nights ago. This water is slowly, slowly receding or percolating into the soil. And this is a great idea for many of you with that kind of swampy, uh, deep area, you know, this low spot in your property. So this is where I've funneled all the water to arrive at. But if you look around, what I've done is I've planted something known as sedge or Carex is the Latin name. And this particular variety of sedge is called Blue Bunny. And the Blue Bunny Sedge, or Carex Hob, whichever you want to call it, but the Blue Bunny Sedge looks great when you plant it in large groups like this. It looks like a grass, but it's not. It's a sedge, and it does like wet. It likes wet, and it looks great even in the colder times of the year. It's October here and it still looks good. A little bit draggled, but it's holding its own. And then if you look down here, this yellow is Acorus, which is definitely a water-loving plant. This bright yellow Acorus. And right here I planted a whole line of marsh marigold. It's a perennial flower, and in the spring it come, it's covered with bright yellow flowers. But marsh marigold, you can imagine it likes it wet. So it's a vegetative stream of marsh marigold flanked on one side by blue bunny sedge, and then on the other side is the yellow evergold sedge. And over there are the native arrowwood, and more Henry's Garnet Itea over here. Doesn't that make a lovely scene? I'll show you a few more and then that'll be it. Follow me here as I show you one of my favorite trees in the world. This is the Dawn Redwood. It was discovered in 1946 in China, previously unknown. And it actually loses these leaflets in the winter, so it goes bare in the winter, even though it looks to to everyone like an evergreen. It's a deciduous conifer. The only other one I know is the bald cypress. It does the same thing. Oh, and the larch. The native larch to this part of the world. But this is the dawn redwood and it grows very, very quickly. And I'll show you one more and that's it. Please follow me down the rain garden. Just planted this one this year, and this is the sourwood, a native tree, beautiful fall color, and it'll eventually get larger. Is that nice? Please take one look around the rain garden, and that's it. Bye.